this game is called Space Decoder. The way it works is basically kind of like a one-on-one -on -one video game. The teacher or student goes and inputs their own questions into the question slides. If the students get these questions right, they're able to play a series of mini games. Once all the mini games have been completed and the questions are finished, the game ends. I'm going to give you a quick overview of how you play it. Uh, basically, there's going to be an introduction on this first screen where um, you will learn about what has happened and why the uh, foreign race needs your help here. So after you listen to that, you will then simply click welcome, click here to begin. Now this is going to give you a short tutorial of the mini games and how they work. And basically this first one here, you're basically going to try to click on all the spaceships when they appear. If you're able to do that, um, then you will be able to continue on to the next section where um, you will get some questions and then after you ask, answer those questions you'll of course get a harder game. So I'm going to click here and just show you kind of how this works. As we begin those ships will appear. What you want to do is click on them and as you click on them they will disappear and I'm trying to catch them as they go here and you're trying to do it before time runs out down here and then you can click the level complete. And you'll notice that level complete did not appear down here until I had cleared all of the spaceships. So basically that was one of the little mini games there and then now I'm going to click here to continue in that center screen again. Here's our first question input by the teacher or another student. We read that and we can take a guess here. I'm going to guess wrong and click A. Oh no, you missed. And basically it says here that we know you can do it. Please go back. This is going to click the try again button and it'll take me back here again where I'm able to make another selection. This time I'm going to read it and get it correct by clicking the letter B. Good job. Keep going. And I'll now click on the red button to keep going. This continues. I'll continue to answer all the questions that appear until I can get to the next mini game. That's basically the way the game is played. So I'm now going to show you how to actually edit and get the Space Decoder game ready to play with your own content. Once you open the game and look over at the left in the slider um, outline here, you'll see that there are different slides over here and we can move through them. The ones that have the games on them, the little mini games, you don't want to edit in any way. Just leave them alone. Don't delete any of the slides. Don't mess with those at all. Basically what you're going to do is come down to where you see the first question slides, which in this one happens to be slide number eight. Basically, you'll follow these instructions where it says to place your question here, the question text goes here, and then um, if you make it too long or if it covers up some of the buttons, just make your text smaller by using your font size tools up at the top. So basically for this one here, we see that the correct answer needs to be B. So for example, if we did a quick little math problem, we would say 2 plus 4 equals question mark and I'm going to make that a little bigger so that it's easier to see in bold and then here the, I need an incorrect answer for A so I might put 7 um, here the correct answer needs to go for B so I'm going to choose 6 and then um, I will choose here 4 and lastly we'll put 2 here so when this one actually plays, if the student clicks A, it's 7 and that's wrong. If they click 6 for B, that's right, and they would go on. Basically, this is what you need to do. You need to go through each one of these slides and put the questions that you want here. Now, one thing that I would do before I began doing this is figure out how many questions I have and then go through here and count all the question cards and see if you have enough. If you don't have enough question cards, and remember there are filtered out through the place, then what you'll need to, need to do is before you actually type in any questions, before you type in any questions, I'm going to say that again, go through and create the number of question cards that you need. Um, to create a question card, you don't actually copy and paste the slide. 
what you do is you duplicate the slide. So for example, here on slide 19, I'm, I'm going to pretend that I needed one more question slide for this. So I right click and I choose duplicate slide. That gives me an exact duplicate underneath there. Slide 20 is now an exact duplicate of 19. And I have another question I can use. This is Office 2007 I'm using where I right click and choose delete. If you're using Office 2003 or any other earlier version of Office, Microsoft PowerPoint that is, you will need to click the slide in order to duplicate it. Go up to the insert menu and choose duplicate. Once again, for any version of Office 2003 or earlier PowerPoint, you will click the slide you want to duplicate, go to the Insert menu, and choose Duplicate, and that will give you a duplicate slide. Um, uh, also, one note there is that you don't want to duplicate the same slide over and over. You want to mix them up and move the slides around a little bit. As you can see, I'm moving 21 to be come 19 now and I'm just clicking and dragging to do that. That way there is no chance that the same correct answer for letter C will happen three slides in a row and the student might get an idea of that oh all the answers are C. That's basically how you can go through editing these and putting them together. Now one last thing, if you do not need all the question slides that are there, simply go in and delete the question slides. Again, remember not to delete any of the actual game slides, but just delete only the slides that you don't need. Just to let you know, there's also a true-false uh, game slide in here that you could also make yes or no by just simply clicking and changing the word true to yes and the word false to no. It tells you very clearly here up in the instructions that whatever you put on this slide, for example, needs to be false because the correct answer is false for this slide. On this one here, the correct answer is true. So on this one, you need to put a true statement. Again, you can duplicate as many of these as you like, creating as many true-false questions as you want. So basically, you've got two templates. You've got an ABCD template or a true-false template inside of here. And obviously, this is PowerPoint, so you could do this in a lot of ways. You could change these to where there's only a um, ABC choice and delete D and just never have a slide that had the correct answer as D on it. All those kind of things are possible. To begin the game using Office 2007, go to the Slideshow tab and click one time. After clicking on the Slideshow tab, click the From Beginning button on the far left. This will begin the game. To start the game in any version of PowerPoint before Office 2007, go to the Slideshow menu and choose View Show. This game is designed for individual student use. It is designed to be used in a one computer to one student setup. Suggested uses are to place a finished game onto a resource computer in a classroom and allow the students to play the game for enrichment or review. Alternatively, you could place a finished copy in a computer lab and place one copy of the game on each computer or on a school server. As with any of these template games, teachers are encouraged to allow students to create these games using the teacher's own curriculum. If you receive a security alert when beginning this game and you're using Office 2007, simply click the Enable This Content button and then click OK. Please note, if you are using a version of Microsoft Office prior to Office 2003, some of the features in these games may not function properly. It is advised that you do your editing of the PowerPoint slides or games in your older version, and then use Microsoft's free PowerPoint Viewer for actual game play. To download the free viewer, just do a web search for PowerPoint Player 2007.